The Optometry Admissions Test, or OAT, can be an intimidating and daunting task on your journey to become an optometrist. And if you're anything like me, you might not have any idea where to start. But don't worry, in this video we're gonna break down everything you need to know about the exam and tips that you can do to make sure you do your best. What's up? Josh Reese, welcome back to my channel where I help you prepare yourself to be the best optometrist that you can be. If you get any value out of this video, go ahead and consider smashing the like button and subscribe for more optometry content. So I took the OAT about a year ago. Now it's hard to believe that it's been so long since I took that exam, but in my mind it was kind of like walking through a field of roses. In the moment when you're right in the thick of it, all you're gonna feel are those thorns in your skin and how hard it is to just press on and get through it. But once you're through it and you look back on it, it's all so beautiful. Well, not really, because when I look back on it, it kind of sucks still, but it's a lot less worse than it seems when you're going right through it. But don't worry, I feel you, it's daunting, right? I hardly slept the night before. It's very, very nerve wracking, but you'll get through it. And honestly, it's only been a year for me and it's hard to remember sometimes even the hardest parts about it. But you can get through this and these times are just temporary. So the OAT is divided into four sections. One is the sciences, the, just the biological sciences, which is uh, full of three components. One, biology, two, chemistry, and three, organic chemistry. And then you have reading comprehension, which is number two. Number three is quantitative reasoning or math. And number four is physics. Now the optometry admissions test is unlike any other test because no other test has those four components. Well, really six components when you count the three different ones in the survey of the sciences. And the exam is about four hours and 50 minutes long to take it. So it's a giant, giant task, right? It's a marathon. You're gonna be sitting down there for almost five hours if you take the whole time to take it. And each section is going to be just under an hour just to put things in perspective for you. And there's going to be about a 30 minute break in the middle for you to eat some lunch or whatever that you came prepared for. I know I brought some Oreos and like some Gatorade. Didn't really go well together, but that's just what you have in the middle of it there. And now it's administered by the American Dental Association for some reason, I guess because optometry can't afford their own association or something, but um, it's administered through Prometric locations. So if there's a Prometric location near you, I know I had to drive about 15 minutes to get to one, but there's some Prometric locations all throughout the United States. I know someone who flew back home to go take it um, back home. So uh, wherever you are, you'll be able to take the OAT. Now, definitely the hardest section for me has gotta be the Survey of Natural Sciences. And I know that's probably the sections that schools look the most at. And it's hardest to prep for because there's so much in there, especially biology. It's almost like you're, when you're studying for it, you're just memorizing random facts, right? It's just everything you've learned into biology in your entire life. And so that might make it a little bit scary, but don't worry, some of the tips I have for it are there to, to help you uh, later in the video. As for how they score the OAT, it's between a 200 and a 400 scale, 300 being the exact average. So on any given day that you take it, let's say you got a 300, you did average, right? You were just right in the middle of the pack of the bell curve, right? If you got a 400, you did the very best out of everyone. Doesn't mean you got every single one right, but it just means on that same test that everyone took, you were um, the highest score. 200, you were the lowest score. It doesn't mean you got everything wrong, just that you were the lowest. So you really need to study um, to not necessarily get everything right, but just to know what other people know, right? If there's going to be a problem that you don't know, odds are that it's a problem that someone else doesn't know either. So really, as you're studying, make sure you know what you know, and if you don't know it, that's okay. Other people might not know it either, right? So the further you get from 300, the harder it is to get a score. So 
going from a 300 through to a 310 is a big jump, but let's say the difference between a 360 and a 370, not that much. Maybe the difference of one or two problems, right? So the higher you want to get, the more studying you're going to have to put in to get there. But the higher you get, the more chances you get to get into optometry school. Now, GPA is on a four-point scale as well. So how most colleges will do it is they'll just take the um, decimal out of the GPA and they'll add them together. So let's say you got a 300 on your OAT and a 4.0 in college. They'll just add them together and take the average. So it'll be like a 350. And so that's kind of what they do in colleges is they'll kind of look at your OAT and GPA side by side or together to make sure that they know whether or not they can call you back for an interview. I know a few of the schools have told me that anywhere, if your GPA and OAT average out to above a 350, you're almost automatically guaranteed to get an interview back. Now as for tips for taking the OAT, there's really just a few of them you need to keep in mind. One is that you're practicing for the marathon. You're not going to be able to run a successful marathon if all you do is sprints and just the small sections of it. You want to put yourself in environments where you can really feel for the exam, right? Don't just spend all of your time studying nits, um, just bits and pieces and trying to put it all together. You want to spend time as you study practicing putting it all together. You want to practice, um, practice long days in a quiet place like a library where you can really fight that marathon because it's a battle against yourself, right? It's not, it's not necessarily a test where you vomit all the information on there. It's just a test where you go through individually, you know it or you don't know it, know it or you don't know it, right? And you just go through the exam, right? So as a part of training for that marathon, tip number two comes from practice exams. You just want to take as many practice exams as you need to. I know one person who studied for the OAT and they only ever took one practice exam and they did not do nearly as well as they could have because they were smarter than me. But they didn't put themselves, uh, they didn't see enough practice problems to know exactly what it was going to be like. You might be the best person at biology or the best person at chemistry, but when it comes down to the exam, you need to know what they're going to test you on. And honestly, a lot of the problems aren't really testing you on exactly if you know that part of biology or if you know that part of physics. It's can you think in a way that a doctor can think, right? Can you have some critical thinking skills? A lot of the OAT isn't testing chemistry or testing quantitative reasoning. They're testing, can we put this person in a situation where they'll have to think like a doctor, right? They'll have to have these critical thinking skills. So go through as many practice exams and many practice problems as you can to really get a feel for how the test is going to be. Now, as for materials that'll get you there, two great ones that I use were the Kaplan Study Guide and Crack the OAT. I know a lot of people have recommended the Oat Destroyer as well. Um, but what they are is they're just uh, programs out there that give you a ton of practice material. I know Crack the OAT had about 10 practice exams, so it was great to just go through. I know Kaplan has a free one online, which is great. Anyone can use it, but they also have a lot of great ones and, and a lot of great practice problems in their book as well. So go ahead, consider getting those study materials. If you're someone who likes to over-prepare, I wouldn't suggest getting every study material because you're not going to have enough time to go through it all and you don't want to waste your money. But at least look into one or two of these different materials and get as many practice problems under your belt as you can. Now, the next study tip is don't study alone. If you study alone, you're going to just fight the battle against yourself and, and it's going to be a longer marathon as far as studying goes. The um, exam day, you're gonna be on your own, but that doesn't mean practicing you have to be all on your own. I know that the best way to find out what you did wrong in a problem is to have someone tell you, that's not how I thought about the problem, this is how I thought about the problem. So if you have a study group, if at all possible, 
great. It does, they don't have to be taking the OAT, they could be taking the DAT or the MCAT, but you just want some people in your study group. I know a lot. there's a lot of crossover between all of those exams. So you want to have other people in your corner. Now, with that being said, YouTube videos are another great way to prepare yourself. If you've ever, never heard of Chad's videos, go ahead and check him out, link below in the description. But he really saved my life when it comes to physics because my physics professors were not very good and he taught me everything I needed to know and I ended up getting a pretty high score on physics. It was one of my higher ones just because of Chad's videos and the practice problems, right? So what you need to do is just don't study alone, right? Have other people in your corner, get other people's points of views go working through practice problems. And there's a lot of YouTube videos, I'll try to link a few in the description that'll take you through that. And really, the last, last piece of advice I have for you is don't stress out. I know that's hard to take, especially if you're someone who has the test anxiety that I know a lot of people do, but really don't stress out. You'll get through it, you'll be an optometrist someday. Worst comes to worst, you might even have to retake it. But with rolling admissions, it's fine. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's enough time for you to take it and retake it before the deadline closes. So just fight through it. Get as many practice problems under your belt as you can. Don't study alone and just don't stress out. You've got this. Now, that's easy to say for me, uh, having been accepted into optometry school and I've taken the OAT uh, over a year ago, but I know that you will get through this and one day you'll be a doctor and think, wow, I'm glad I knew all this about the OAT and that I didn't have to stress out about it as much as I thought. It'll be better than you think. For those of you who have already taken the OAT, go ahead and comment down below um, your biggest piece of advice and if you haven't taken the OAT yet, go ahead and put some questions you have down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.